Okay, so getting back to some of the, the technical um, stuff that we were talking about on that first slide. So this, this graphic up in the top right uh, sort of shows that relationship of where the divide is between the electric utility and their engineers and us as MEP building engineers. So there's a very clear point in the electrical system where everything upstream is going to be designed by the power company and their engineers, and everything downstream is going to be the building engineers and our responsibility. And it's a very important thing that we coordinate with the utility engineers. So actually like, I was out on site for a couple different projects this week even where I'm meeting with the power companies walking around the site saying here's where we want to put your guys's transformer so that we can pull power from it and we'll pull it in this way to our building so that this is going to be the utility owned transformer we call this a pad mount transformer because it just sits on a concrete pad just like it shows there and the utility will own this equipment um, and will pull our electric service into the building, which then goes into all of our distribution equipment, which we'll talk about a little bit more um, in the following slides. But the thing I want to point out is that this is what we call the service point. And when it comes into our building is where we call the service disconnect or the service equipment. Um, but essentially, we're pulling in a new electric service from the utility company, and um, that's where we get our power from. And so as electrical engineers um, on the MEP side, we need to be the ones that are telling the utility how much power do we actually need for the building? Because someone's going to say, I want to build this and I want it to do all of these things. And then they're going to need an electrical engineer to, to look at what they want to do and perform a bunch of calculations that say, I think you need this much electricity in your building to do that. So, for example, I might have a project where I know they want to so they want to pull in um, 100 new electric vehicle chargers to a site. So I've got to figure out how much each of those electrical vehicle chargers pull and, and add them all up and do my calculations to go back to the utility and say, hey, we need a new service. It needs to be this many amps, this many volts, and we need a new tr transformer and I need to work with you guys on where to put that on the site. One of the reasons that this has been so critical in projects lately is that um, over the past few years, there's been like a huge supply chain disruption, especially for the electrical uh, industry. And so a lot of these big pieces of equipment, specifically service transformers, are like super backordered. Um, and so you want to be getting this information as soon as you get the project so that you can tell the utility, hey, please start working on getting us this size transformer. So by, by the time you're ready to start building, you can get this equipment out there. Um, and one thing I just want to point out, when I say electric service, this, the measurement of an electric service should be in voltage and amperage. I remember like very early on um, in my career, my boss asked me, he's like, hey, what's that, what's the size of the electrical service? And I didn't even know how to respond. And I had the drawings in front of me, but like I didn't know what to look at um, because I just didn't know. And so the electric service means how much power is our customer getting? And that that should come in a form of amperage and voltage. You could put it in power. Um, and remember the the power equation is that power equals voltage times amperage. So if you give them the voltage and the amperage, they can technically tell how much power is there. But it's extremely important to answer that question uh, with both voltage and amperage so that we also know how much voltage is there. Because if you just give them the power, they don't know what the voltage and amperage split is. Um, does does that make sense? Do you guys have any questions on electric service? Uh, on the example, what's what does the 4W mean? Great question. Um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more here. And I guess I, I so this is actually something that may be in the pre-work too, but um, let me see if I can pull this up to answer your question better. 4W stands for four wires. And um, Voltage is a system that uh, 
like when we we have several different we have two different voltages here that are listed so the voltage of this electrical service is 277 480 volt three phase four wire and so let me pull up this which is from pre-work one or pre-work three i think um and so this this wiring diagram um would actually be the same thing at 277 480 so i'm just going to change this to, so anywhere that it says 120 you can think 277 and anywhere that it says 208 you can think 480. so when I, when that says four wires what it's saying is that there's three phase wires and one neutral wire so that's a total of four wires if if it said three phase three wire that would mean that you don't have a neutral and then you don't have uh, the ability to make any of these connections from phase to neutral, which is what this this diagram is showing. Um, and if it said, this is where it goes back to this pre-work, like here's all your different types of voltage systems. Um, but essentially, the, the 4W is saying four wires, which tells us we have this system and we can get all of these different voltages and it's this is one of the most like fundamental but sort of complicated topics of um base ee and so i think that if you're still having questions on that um i would go back through this pre-work three and and watch some of these videos and read this and really try and understand this diagram because it and we're going to talk about this more today too um and i, I think it'll help with some examples um, but this this is not a very straightforward thing to grasp, and it's extremely important and fundamental. It's not like there's a bunch of math behind this diagram, but we need to know how voltage is derived. Um, so so that's a great question. Um, we'll talk through it more as as we go. Um, was there anything about that that did, did that help at all, or was that kind of just a lot of talk that that didn't really answer your question? Yeah, yeah that helped. Uh... I was already mostly familiar with the concepts, but other than that, yeah, uh, answered perfectly. It all makes sense. Okay, so yeah, we'll we'll talk more. And this this that's something that I really had no understanding of when I went and first started working, and it took me a while to like continue to get drilled into my head. Like, hey, this is how you pull. This is how you get your voltage. And and still, people that I've worked with for, that have been engineers for a while don't necessarily totally grasp that concept. So I'm we're going to keep talking about it in different examples, and it's a very hard thing from to just point at and then be like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Um, on the first time that you look at it. So so don't be discouraged if you don't totally get that. And um, we'll talk more as we go through this presentation, but that, that's a really good question.